know movies and how i'm chris geiger and look Klaska. and today we are reviewing bob's burgers the movie so i was super excited that this movie was coming out i am a big bob's burgers fan i've been a fan of h john benjamin for a long time since he was like in Co- when he was coach mcgurk in home movies and then of course as archer and as bob belcher i love the characters in this show i think they're so relatable um, and they have that sort of dry Dr. Katz, Lauren Bouchard sense of humor. And I even like that they sing. I don't like musicals because I feel, I don't know why I don't like musicals, but I feel like in musicals, they everything is so forced. Mm-hmm. But where I feel like in Bob's Burgers and other sort of similar shows, like when they sing, it's not force it's because they're just breaking into song you know it it seems like they're doing it as a creative choice not because this is the genre and we have to sing everything Mm -hmm. (laughs) so but you haven't had the same exposure to I I have not so I had minimal exposure I can say I think I was recommended like a Halloween episode a couple years back and then I think that was about it and I had a firm understanding that you know, a lot of folks, there's a lot of cross interests with the Simpsons mm. and animated adult animated car- cartoons, but I really didn't get into Bob's Burgers. And I feel like a lot of my friends are actually in- interested in it. So, or they watch it regularly or they make like Tina Belcher jokes. And I'm like, I don't understand, but it's okay. <laughs> Going in, I thought that I would be at disadvantage because I don't, I don't watch, I haven't watched the show, but this was a new experience that has enlightened me uh, to the Belcher family and their cast of characters in their seaside town. And I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the movie. I, I thought it was good. I wasn't sure what to expect because usually with an animated television series when it does when there goes movie territory it's usually something that is kind of like a running underlying theme and this one I felt like was very much dedicated to doing something new and still keeping people who are not people like me who are not up on the the show entertained it was hard to know what you would experience from the movie like what you would think was funny like a lot of the people in the theater with us were clearly fans like they Mm -hmm. were laughing at so there's one scene where like they're driving through and there's all these old carousel horses and they're just like crashing into them and tina's like no 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 and that's like there was an episode where she had like chained herself to a carousel horse because they were going to tear it down Uh uh, tear down the carousel so that was like a reference back to that I wasn't sure if you would think that was funny like it was like if that was objectively funny or if it was just funny because of the callback there's uh, a scene where she's where Louise is talking to her melted Japanese toy Kuchikobi there's a whole episode about how he gets melted so I wasn't sure if like that would be objectively funny to someone if they didn't have that backstory so there were like several things in it that had like callbacks but there were a lot of things that were not related to anything in the past like Teddy builds the little mobile cart for them to sell right right? and that had nothing to do with anything that ever happened in the past like that was like he puts an all imported olive bar into the into the little mobile cart because if you are buying uh, hamburgers from a mobile cart you would definitely want imported olive as well it was it's just like one long episode basically (laughs) which is exactly what it should have been like the simpsons movie is just long one episode or one long episode yeah exactly yeah so i was trying to think were there any new net new characters in this movie that like i guess are not in the television show like the lawyer cousin the lawyer cousin was new Okay. I have not seen him before. Cotton Candy Dan. Okay. New. Um, <laughs> Mickey is old. Some of the carnies were not okay. ever, like, you know, they're always background characters. They don't get names. Okay. Uh, in most cases, they didn't get names here either. In the end credits, they have like some of the characters dancing. Mm-hmm. And those are 
like some of those characters are from the show, but you never saw them in this episode. Like oh, okay. uh, Linda's sister, you never saw her in this movie, but she is in a lot of the episodes. Um, okay. There weren't a ton of new characters though. So you got a mm. good introduction to a lot of them. The banker is in several episodes because they're always, you know, behind on their payment. Is there anybody else? I don't think so. So yeah, I thought, yeah, overall, I, I thought it was good and glad I saw it. I just feel like I've seen this trailer for the past six months <laughs> on every single movie that I have seen, whether it was, you know, something blockbuster Marvel or down to, you know, something very independent at Alamo. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the cast, right? It has such a diverse cast. H. John Benjamin, Jenny Slate is Tammy, Eugene. Oh, I know who you're, Merman? Yes. Plays Jean. Kevin Klein kind of looks like her. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I mean, you're getting like such a diverse character set. It's great. I think that it draws from all of those things. And even it's been on for so many years now. And what else does Fox Studios have coming out in the movie genre, right? Like they, they have a lot of access to media. So when they're going to like push a movie, they can do it. And if they don't have another big summer movie coming out, these are the, tra- this is the trailer you're going to see. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Probably the last thing before the, the Disney acquisition. Yeah. Hopefully there'll be more in the future. More Bob Burgers movies. <laughs> Bob's Burgers. Movie. Was it about the burgers? <laughs> <laughs> That's good the slides. I was completely unaware that they like break into song. Yes. Well, in the show, Linda, his wife, likes to sing everything. Like she, good morning. And like, she just is one of those people who sings everything. Um, yeah, she seems like a very cheer, cheerful person, cheerleader for Bob. I mean, yeah. he seems pretty defeated. Yes, for sure. Even though I really liked it and I was glad I saw it and I would recommend it to give it a high reader's choice, high story. If you break it down in the categories, it's still an animated very long episode of a TV show. The acting is is great. Voice acting is great, but because you're not seeing their faces, you, it's hard to give it an above average in that genre. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know what someone would have to do to get an above average in the genre. <laughs> I agree. It's hard because one, there's not that many, I guess, like animated series, like television show, and then, then they do the movies. Like the last one I can think of was the Simpsons and that was almost 15 years ago Mm. yeah I didn't see that uh and I'm like a fair weather Simpsons fan yeah seasons one through ten I really enjoyed after that I I don't think I really watched it after that and honestly it's really seasons one through seven Mm mm-hmm But I ended up watching for another couple of years just because I liked the first seven seasons so much. But it really fell off there after 10. Yeah. Um, Cinematography, you know, it's animated. So what are you going to do? I did like the little puns that are placed around, you know, the molehill roller coaster, which is like the slowest, like least windy roller coaster. Um, Ships and Giggles is swinging boat. I thought those were cute. Costumes, you know, again, animated, hair and makeup, animated. It's hard to stand out in any of these categories. I did think that the soundtrack could have been better. But they could have collaborated with some folks. They could have, or they could have just used, like, you know, songs that would have been appropriate for, like, chase scenes when they're being chased through the park by the mm-hmm. dog or the dog character. I guess you could count the soundtrack of them singing. Um, And I thought that those were well done. I think all of, even the TV episodes have really good songs in them. I liked it. I would recommend it. I mean, it is a long episode of a TV show. I thought it was good. I would recommend it if it was really hot outside and you needed something to watch that was, (laughs) as you're waiting for something else, 
I don't know, Jurassic Park is coming out and you're like, oh, I guess this family friendly, I would recommend. Yes. Or if you're just a huge Bob's Burgers fan. Yeah. I'm assuming that, you know, there's a, there was a lot. I think so. Well, we'll find out this weekend, I guess. Do you have anything to plug in this episode? I have nothing to plug. I'm hoping, like, I'm trying to think of my blind spots in terms of summer movies, but I think Lightyear might might be on the list. Uh, Pixar animated mm-hmm. teacher. Other than that, I think the bases are covered. It's going to be a very busy couple weeks. What about you? I don't really have anything to plug. Although I will say, I was thinking back on this weekend, it was a very diverse movie watching weekend. Like we went from men to Bob Burgers. <laughs> and then in the middle, I had the Roundup, which is the Korean buddy cop movie that was showing at AMC. So it is going to be a busy few weeks. I think it'll be unpredictable though. Yes, I agree. Oh yeah. And there's Chippendale's Rescue Rangers on Disney+. Plus. Yes. I'm surprised you haven't watched that already. Uh, well, it's been pretty, I mean, it's been pretty busy. I thought we were going to watch it yesterday before we ended up watching Bob's Burgers. And then I thought we were going to end up watching it afterward and we didn't. So that'll probably be a tonight thing. And next time, <laughs> <laughs> either awesome. tonight or sometime this week. All right. Well, I look forward to hearing your thoughts on that. <laughs> Should be fun. I heard, I've been hearing things. I've been, you know, avoiding spoilers, avoiding reviews. So looking forward. All right. Is this a remake of a previous? It oh, sounds so familiar. I don't know if it's a remake. I just think that it's an animated feature that's on Disney Plus. So it would, I guess it would be in the same vein of Bob's Burgers, of it being like a series. And then it stopped though. And then I think there it's now a, a feature. Mm. As, hybrid i don't think it's fully animated feature but there's definitely some animation special effects was chippendale a show it was so it was a television show in the early to mid 90s and then were there any movies back then that's a great question i don't know if they were motion picture in theaters there might have been a possibility that it was a television movie. Do you, did you watch the show when you were? I did. It was, I I did. I have form of nostalgia with Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers as they are chipmunks that solve crimes, which is pretty impressive. Now, yes, for the chipmunk variety, for sure. Do you, how do you feel about Alvin and the chipmunks? I think they're okay. They're like rock stars. They're not really solving crimes. They have aspirations for entertainment stardom, whereas Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers are more like detectives. And they like make really cool stuff out of regular household items. And I think (laughs) on top of that, at Disney's Toontown in Disneyland, they have their own ride, which is actually the coolest ride in Toontown. So there's a number of different sticking points. Like they have a physical adventure that you can go on at the park. They had the television show. And even though it was almost 30 years ago, there are still nostalgic pieces there and they pop up in things, you know, here, here and there. But I think that, you know, they're part of the Disney family and they decided to do something neat now with John Mulaney and Andy Sandberg. And so if Chippendale and Alvin and the Chipmunks got into a fight. Who would win? <laughs> uh, who do you think would win? I mean, I feel like Chip and Dale would win, even though there's only two of them. It does give an advantage, though, to Alvin and the Chipmunks because there's three. Yeah, there's three of them. But Maybe, like, Theodore will just go and hang out or something. He'll forget to show up that day. Right. But Chip and Dale are also rangers, so I feel like they have a lot of physical activity on their side so yeah I I think it'd be hard to call but yeah I have to give it to Chip and Dale (laughs) all right well thanks everyone for joining 
Feel free to weigh in on the Chippendale versus Alvin and the Chipmunks fight on Instagram. Yes, exactly. We need to know your thoughts. See you next time.